Hello! In today's lesson, we're looking at Chapter 3, Section 3, Parallel Lines and Transversals. Our objective is to prove and use results about parallel lines and transversals and use properties of parallel lines to solve problems. Postulate 15, corresponding angle postulate. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pair of corresponding angles are congruent. What that means is if I were to draw my box around these angles, notice that angle 1 and angle 2 take the same spot within the boxes, so these two angles are corresponding and they have the same measure because they are congruent. Theorem 3.4, alternate interior angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pair of alternate interior angles are congruent. If I drew my letter Z, notice that angle 3 and angle 4 are within the letter Z, or the other way you can look at it is that angle 3 and angle 4 are inside of the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal, so they're alternate interior angles. And these two angles, 3 and 4, have the same measure because they are congruent. Theorem 3.5, consecutive interior angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pair of consecutive interior angles are supplementary, meaning that if the two angles are on the same side of the transversal and inside the parallel lines, then these two angles, angle 5 and angle 6, their sum adds up to 180 degrees because they are supplementary. Theorem 3.6, alternate exterior angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent. Again, we're going to draw that letter Z. This time, angle 7 and angle 8 are outside the letter Z. Another way you can look at it is that angle 7 and angle 8 are outside the parallel lines on opposite sides of the transversal. The measure of angle 7 and angle 8 are equal because the angles are congruent. Theorem 3.7, perpendicular transversal. If a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. That means that if my transversal cuts two or more parallel lines, if it creates that 90 degree angle with one of the parallel lines, then it automatically is creating a 90 degree angle with the other parallel line. Example 1, using properties of parallel lines. Given that the measure of angle 1 is equal to 118 degrees, find each measure, tell which postulate or theorem you use. We know that the measure over here is 118 degrees. First, we're going to find A, which is the measure of angle 2. Notice that angle 1 and angle 2 are on the straight line, so we know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is going to equal 180 degrees because that is the linear pair. We can write it as this. The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. We know that the measure of angle 1 is 118 degrees plus the measure of angle 2, which is equal to 180 degrees. So to find the measure of angle 2, we're going to take 180 minus the measure of angle 1, which is 180 minus 118, and you get the measure of angle 2 is 62 degrees. And this is using the linear pair postulate. For B, to find the measure of angle 3, I notice that angle 1 and 3 are in the same location in my box. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3, which is 118 degrees, because they are corresponding angles, and so I'm using the corresponding angles postulate. To find the measure of angle 5, if I draw my backwards letter Z, I notice that angle 2 and angle 5 are inside my letter Z. Or another way I can say it is that angle 2 and angle 5 are inside the parallel lines on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle 2 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles, and I know that alternate interior angles are congruent. In A, we found that angle 2 was 62 degrees, which means that the measure of angle 5 is equal to the measure of angle 2, which which is 62 degrees, and that's using the alternate interior angles theorem.
For D, there's many ways you can find D. One of the ways is if I draw my backwards letter Z, I notice that angle 1 and angle 4 are outside the parallel lines on opposite sides of the transversal, so angle 1 and angle 4 are alternate exterior angles, and I know that alternate exterior angles are congruent to the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 1, and we know that the measure of angle 1 is 118 degrees, so the measure of angle 4 is 118 degrees, and that's using the alternate exterior angles theorem. Another way that you could find angle 4 is know that angle 3 and angle 4 are vertical pairs. So you can use vertical pairs to say that the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 4, and so the measure of angle 4 is 118 degrees. Example 2, using properties of parallel lines. Parking lot design. In the diagram of the parking lot, M is parallel to N. What is the measure of angle 1? It would be easier to see if you were to extend the lines of M and N and draw the transversal too, so it looks something like this. Here, I notice that angle 1 and our 80 degrees are inside the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal, so I know that angle 1 and 80 degrees are consecutive interior angles, which means that the measure of angle 1 plus plus 80 degrees is equal to 180 degrees, and that's using the consecutive interior angles theorem. Solve for the measure of angle 1 by subtracting 80 degrees on both sides, and you get that the measure of angle 1 is 100 degrees, and that's using the subtraction property of equality. Alright, checkpoint problems number 1, 2, and 3 are yours. Given that the measure of angle 6 is equal to 53 degrees, find the angle measures and tell which postulate or theorem you use. In 1, find the measure of angle 7. In 2, find the measure of angle 8. And in 3, find the measure of angle 9. For each one of these problems, tell which postulate or theorem you used. Example 3, using properties of parallel lines. Use properties of parallel lines to find the value of x. Here's my x. It's in this quantity, 7x plus 1. The problem with finding x is I don't know what the value of 1 is. I could try to use the alternate interior angles, but I notice that 39 is inside my parallel line, and 7x plus 1 is on the outside, and it's not even on the same side as the 39, so I cannot use corresponding angles. So to solve for the value of x, this is going to be a two-step process. First, I'm going to need to find the measure of angle 1 and then use that to solve for 7x plus 1. I notice that angle 1 is on the inside of my parallel line, so is angle 39, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. If I draw my letter z, 39 and 1 are inside my letter z, so I know that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of 39 degrees because they're alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are congruent. And that's using the alternate interior angles theorem. Once I find the measure of angle 1, I know that angle 1 and 7x plus 1 are a linear pair because they're on the same line. I know linear pairs add up to 180 degrees, and that's using the linear pair postulate. So the measure of angle 1 is 39 degrees, plus 7x plus 1 is equal to 180 degrees. Simplify on the left-hand side, you end up with 40 plus 7x equal to 180 degrees. Subtract 40 on both sides, and you get that 7x is equal to 140. Divide by 7 on both sides and you get that x is 20. Alright, check when problems number 4 and 5 are yours. For each of these, use the properties of parallel lines to find the value of x. Alright, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.